What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a vinyl update because you guys have been asking for it and I promised it I'm in the process of moving out right now so I figured this would be the perfect time to do it before I actually get everything packed up. Now for the majority of this video, I'm actually sitting down right now. You can see my vinyl collection is lined up over here. It has grown in numbers. It's multiplying. I'm just briefly going to be going through some of these, talking a little bit about them, and I'm going to start off with Avenged Sevenfold City of Evil, kind of going alphabetically through these as I get to them. City of Evil was my first Avenged Sevenfold album, and I only felt it appropriate to pick it up on vinyl. Beach House's Bloom was another great addition to the collection. That's just one that I feel a strong connection to. It's one of those albums that actually guided me and helped me drift off to sleep. This is one that I got pretty recently. The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me by Brand New. Uh, if you saw my review back in July, it, it's an album that really affected me in some ways, and I just think that that's it's something really special. There's a lot in here, and there's a lot that you can even decipher from the artwork of this. It's a painting. Now we get to Melophobia by Cage the Elephant, an excellent album from 2013. Um, Sucker by Charlie XCX. Yes, I did a rant about her. Uh, she's a, I think she's a solid artist. I really like this album, Sucker but I don't really care for her that much as a person just because of the way she handles herself and that sort of thing, canceling some tour dates, and that's just kind of become a routine thing almost. Um, we've got a Boston record here. Uh, that's one that I got from my record store. They were pretty cool. Uh, they were like, hey, uh, you know, pick up another record you bought too. Go ahead and get another one. This was back when I was living at the coast. So that's really something that I enjoy having, especially with More Than a Feeling being one of my first like classic rock songs, I suppose. Um, I've got a couple others. Uh, I got that Churches uh, from uh, Record Store Day, but then we have two other Churches albums that I've added on. I've added on both of their full-length records here. We have, of course, The Bones of What You Believe and one of my favorite records of 2015, Every Open Eye. Definitely a must-own in my opinion. It's, I love synth pop. Speaking of great records from 2015, we have the Dead Weathers Dodge and Burn right here. I love the cover art on this and just what's on the back as well. Open it up, cool little uh, gateway fold there. Uh, all four members you can see. Glad that they got back together, recorded another album. It's something that I was hoping that they would do and it happened and it turned out great. Honestly, it's my favorite one from the Dead Weather to date. Um, this is one that I just got recently from my friend. I picked up five records for $50, which is a really great deal. This was one of them. Daft Punk's Random Access Memories. Ooh, keyboard, shiny, shiny keyboard, upside down. I'm not gonna turn it upside down because I don't wanna drop the records out. But uh, I re-listened uh, to this thing, I revisited this thing, and it still holds up. It's such a solid, solid record from this dance duo. Um, Fallout Boys, American Beauty, American Psycho was one that I picked up, uh, I think in May. My record store had it on sale for about $14, so why not? I, I enjoyed a good chunk of that record. Uh, Death Cab for Cuties, Transatlanticism, classic indie record there, came out in 2003. And it's one that I just, I think even more so this year, I just really started connecting with. And all of my records just collapsed over there. Eminem's The Marshall Mathers LP, classic rap album right here. Uh, it came out in 2000, uh, The Vintage House. It's pretty much iconic at this point. Some people hate the word iconic. I've heard that a lot recently. I'm sorry for using that if you can't stand it. Just some great lullabies on here, you know? Some stuff that really gets you in the mood to sleep. The Way I Am, Kill You, and of course, Kim. Just such a soothing song. And if you're not picking up on my sarcasm right there, then you really have not heard this record, and I would recommend that you go do so. I, of course, had to get Father John Misty's I Love You, Honey Bear, just because it's... I, I love his attitude on this record. It's just seething with sarcasm, and that's something that you really can't go wrong with, at least for me and my sense of humor. I think I get Josh Tillman and what he was going for on that record. I can't remember if I showed this one off already, but of course a classic here, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors. I'm pretty sure I showed that in the last record collection video. And of course, all of my Green Day records, we have Warning right there to go along with Dookie that I already owned. Uh, Tune in Tokyo from Record Store Day, uh, fall of 2014, I believe. That was on blue vinyl. That's really cool. I really like that, the fact that it came. I, I like colored vinyl. I'm not as 
like crazy for it as some people. Like I'm not, it's not like always like must have, but I did think that one looked pretty cool. Um, we've got 21st Century Breakdown, bought that at the same time as Warning. So adding to the Green Day collection, got to stock up on my favorite band, of course. Um, already of course had Uno and Trey and even Demolicious was in there as well. Um, we got a group love single under the covers. I got this in Canada for record store day this past year. I was out of the country but uh, for the first time ever and this was one of the things that I managed to get my hands on that was actually on my list that I wanted. Some, a couple of good covers on here. I wasn't crazy about it but I, I really did like their spider head cover, uh, Cage the Elephant. And then, of course, there was a Beach Boys cover on here as well. It was pretty solid. Uh, Jack White, uh, Lazaretto. That's one of those records that everyone was going crazy for. Uh, some of the best vinyl sales, I think, that, uh, best first week vinyl sales that we've seen in a long time, just because this little record can do so many different things. If you saw the Jimmy Fallon video with uh, Jack talking about it, yeah, this thing goes backwards and all sorts of stuff. You can see a spinning angel and all this other stuff. Uh, it's crazy. Definitely pick it up for yourself if you're into record collecting. I don't have the best uh, record player at this point, but hopefully after I save some cash up, I'll be able to get myself a new one before too long. Uh, right here, I don't like this cover because you can't really see it, but it's kind of a, uh, I don't, can you see John Mayer on there? You really can't. This is Continuum by John Mayer, my favorite record from him. You can at least see the track listing there and uh, maybe a little bit info right there. I'll open it up. But it looks like all white on camera, just a really solid like folky pop album that uh, I keep coming back to over the years. Uh, that's another one that I've already shown you guys. Of course my Linkin Park stuff. I wish I had been able to get Meteora signed by Chester, but I did get my CD signed by the entire band whenever I met them about a year and a half ago. Uh, I think I added The Hunting Party this year. That's a new one. Uh, it's a different cover with it being the vinyl release and it's just very holographic, almost like a Pokemon card or something like that. That's pretty cool. Still holds up, of course. Lord's Pure Heroin I already had. Here's some nice colored vinyl, The Main and American Candy, another one of my favorite records from 2015. And what do we have here other than, uh, well, if it would come out of its damn thing, uh, we got some pink vinyl here. We got some colored vinyl for all you colored fanatics out there. This one is awesome. Love, love seeing it. It matches up. Look, look at it. With it looks awesome, doesn't it? Here's my favorite Muse album, Origin of Symmetry. I got that right after Christmas. I think I got a gift card or something to FYE and picked this one up. Uh, I'm not sure if I already had this one. I think I did, but of course, Black Holes and Revelations as well. We get to some My Chemical Romance vinyl with three cheers for Sweet Revenge, which is, uh, of course, amazing. And then the Black Parade on its uh, different cover. It's got a different cover on it than the album, of course. And then you've just got like the whole cast of the Black Parade going on right now, the patient, everything. Just such a dark and twisted, but phenomenal record. Always gonna be one of my favorite albums. Danger Days there. Neverbind by Nirvana. I'm not sure if I had that before or not. Neutral Milk Hotel, the Broken Paramore record, of course, from Record Store Day. Um, Paramore's self-titled album, one of my favorites from 2013. Um, Pierce the Veil, Collide with the Sky. I know some of you guys would be really happy to see this in my collection. Maybe didn't expect it. But yeah, I loved this record. Some people are always like blown away by the fact. I guess it's just because I dismiss so much like post-hardcore and like metalcore and that sort of thing. But this was a very inventive album. So much fun, even though it had a lot of depressing topics on it. So it was nice to see them, I guess, put a turn on that. The Postal Service give up their one and only LP. They actually reunited about a year ago, two years ago, I guess it was now, played a few festival dates and that sort of thing, released a couple of unreleased songs. We got Queens of the Stone Age here with one of my top 10 albums of all time, Lullabies to Paralyze. I listen to, th I, I probably about every, at least every two months, and that's pretty, good for me, considering someone uh, who listens to as many albums as I do. Picked up their album Light Clockwork as well because I had to have it. Just their two best records right here, uh, in my opinion, of course. Uh, they've got another one that's really, really close, Songs for the Deaf, but these two just are tops in my book. 
Reliant K's, mm-hmm. I don't remember if I had that or not, but mm-hmm, you better believe I'm showing it to you again because I got that uh, for the 10th anniversary. That's when it came out on vinyl, I believe. Maybe not for the first time, but still. Uh, I already showed you guys that one. Uh, we have Slater Kenny and a couple of their records right here. Dig Me Out and New Cities to Love. You guys might have noticed in the background of my regular set, I actually have a No Cities to Love poster, and that was given to me by the owner of a record shop. I got this one. I traded uh, a few records with Mark over at Spinet Reviews and got Slaybell's Bitter Rivals, an awesome album from 2013, a big turnaround from their last LP before that. St. Vincent and her self-titled, of course, featuring such classics as Rattlesnake and my favorite, Prince Johnny, which ended up on my best of 2015 list. Such a good song. Beautiful letdown we have here. I'm probably showing you guys some repeats at this point, so I'm sorry. I'm just wrapping it up at this point. We're in the T's. Tame Paula's Currents. That was one that uh, really surprised me this year. This is just the more I let it sit in and the more I stare at this album cover, the more I lose myself in it. Taking Back Sunday, tell all your friends their debut. Taylor Swift's 1989. I came home from Wilmington last year and found this sitting under my parents' Christmas tree. You you can't go wrong with that. That's a great... My birthday and Christmas were right around the same time. This was for my birthday, and I was just chilling there. And it was like I'd come home from a long day at work, driven all the way home. Taylor's waiting under the tree for me. You better believe I'm a happy man. Only a few to go at this point, starting with Three Days Grace's 1X. That's one that I ordered at the same time off of the same site as the Avenged Sevenfold record. And here is Truth Serum, the EP by Tovlo. Some of these songs did not make it onto her uh, full-length Queen of the Clouds, unfortunately. But uh, it comes on pink vinyl there. Thought that was really awesome. And uh, once again, uh, you know, some records, they look really cool. Some of them will just be like on like green vinyl and stuff. And I'll just be like, well, I don't really care that much. I mean, like, yeah, it looks cool. But I mean, like, I'm listening to the music. I'm not just really staring at the record the whole time. But this one, I'll admit that it looks kind of cool and fits with the flow uh, of like the artwork and stuff. I enjoyed the Truth Serum EP a whole lot. Queen of the Clouds didn't hold up that well over time, at least whenever I revisited it. I haven't listened to it lately, but uh, here I have the Blue Album, a.k.a. the first album by Weezer. There's been many self-titled records actually called Weezer, but this was the first of them, and this is one the one hailed as the classic. I need to add Pinkerton to my collection before too long, but of course we have Everything Will Be Alright in the end for now. That's okay. That's enough, isn't it? I would, I hope at least. Uh, such a good album. I listened to this thing at work about a week ago and was just having so much fun. It's such a blast to listen to. Even Fantano uh, over at the Needle Drop was talking uh, about a couple of the new Weezer tracks. He likes both of them, Thank God for Girls and Do You Want to Get High, and he really liked this record as well. So uh, I don't know why that surprised me or why I commented on that, but I'm excited that people are liking the new Weezer stuff. Uh, not Maybe not quite as much as me, but still, at least they're liking it. Um, then we have a couple of White Stripes records here, uh, two that I absolutely love and adore, Elephant and uh, Get Behind Me Satan, two that I picked up I think within the past year. I'm not sure if I had this one in the last record video or not, but I got this one on Record Store Day in Canada. This was one that I was like freaking out. I was with my friend Allison and I was like, we have to get to the record store. I have to get this one, okay? We can't miss it. So we waited in line and I was able to get my hands on it. It wasn't like they were running super low of it or anything, but it's got kind of a holographic cover on it. Once again, you can't really, oh, did you see it? Yeah, it changes faces here in the cover, which is kind of cool. Jack and Meg White on the cover there, and I don't think this album gets enough love, if I'm being honest. I really, really like this one. It's got great songs like The Nurse, Blue Orchid, Red Rain, which is probably one of my favorites at this point, Little Ghost, just so much to love. And I love the way that this record feels, too. It's got a, uh, of course, like I said, it's got kind of a holographic on the front and it's just so smooth on the back and it's got a new and updated picture of Jack White with that shitty haircut. He's growing his hair back out from what I can tell and all I have to say is thank God. I picked up the debut from Wolf Alice. My Love is Cool. One of the only records to get a perfect score from yours truly this year. Well worth the vinyl pickup. In fact, I pre-ordered the CD 
and the vinyl at the same time because I loved it that much. Just, I had to. I heard the first play of it and I was like, this is what I guess I've been looking for in a record without even knowing it. They've just combined so many different sounds to get what they have and I've heard them called unoriginal and that sort of thing. But everybody has influences. That's pretty much undeniable. Nobody is totally unique. But these guys made something unique by, I think, playing... A, from a, a few of the strengths of their contemporaries and some of the people who influenced them. So definitely an album to check out from 2015 if you haven't done so already. The final record in my record collection is The XX's debut self-titled record. Wasn't a huge fan of Coexist that followed it up. I mean, there were some great songs on there, but this one is just so pleasing from start to finish, sonically pleasing. I hope you guys enjoyed this final update. If this is your first time checking out my channel, maybe you're just like looking through people's record collections and that sort of thing, make sure you subscribe because I do a lot of track reviews, I do music news, I do all sorts of stuff on this channel. Thank you so much for checking it out, and of course to all of my subscribers who have been asking for this, I hope that you enjoyed seeing this. I'm gonna try to keep a list from now on so I don't keep showing you guys duplicates and that sort of thing. I'm gonna make a list of all of the new records I purchased from like November 2015 forward until I do another update video probably in the spring. Part three will drop then if I've added enough records to the collection uh, that I feel like it deserves a video. Thanks for watching, smashing the like button, and subscribing to the channel if you are new. And other than that, I, I guess I'll see you guys very soon right here on Beyond ARTV.